This week on APV News, the USU welcomed visitors from overseas. Find out what brought them to Logan and when you might see them again. A chopper landed here. We'll tell you what brought the military to Utah State. Motorcycles and teddy bears? We'll tell you how this unlikely combination is making a difference in children's lives. The homecoming game was a great night for all Aggies, but I'll tell you why one should be particularly happy. All that and more on this week's ATV News. Welcome to ATV News, I'm Emily Landin. And I'm Ramita Nadakovich. Resource students here at UASU now have a new home. SJ and Jesse E. Quinney College of Natural Resources was renamed following a $10 million donation from the Quinney Foundation to Utah State University. The gift and name change were formally announced last Wednesday at a dinner honoring the continued support of the Quinney family to USU. Utah State University President Stan Albrecht says that because of state budget cuts over the last several years, the university faced the difficult possibility of having to eliminate the college, but that donation will allow it to stay in place. We made the decision that because of the historical importance of this college, we needed to find a way to secure not only its present, but its future. And so the Quinney Foundation stepped up, as they have so many times in the past, and made an additional gift to Utah State University. And so it will be named after the Quinney Foundation, the Quinney family. Over the past 40 years, the Quinney family has donated over $40 million to USU in support of the National Resources Education. Deputies say a four-year-old boy is lucky to be alive tonight after his mom accidentally drove over his midsection with a van, minivan. Lieutenant Brian Locke of Cash Valley Sheriff's of the Cash Valley Sheriff's Office said Philip Lee and his mother Joanna were delivering Boy Scout flyers in Wellsville last Wednesday when the accident occurred. Lieutenant Locke said Joanna didn't realize Philip had left the car and backed out of the driveway and over his torso. She called 911 and started driving her son to the Logan Regional Hospital. She was met by an ambulance at the Arby's at the south end of Logan. Philip was released from the hospital with minor cuts and bruises. Lieutenant Locke said it's a miracle this boy is still alive. This doesn't happen very often with such an outcome. Three journalism students traveled to Ethiopia this summer to bring back news. Today they share the heartache, poverty, and courage that inspire their stories with other students. Like stepping into another world, USU students Mackenzie Hamilton, Danielle Manley, and Dale Nicholas said traveling to Ethiopia was an eye-opening journey, one that they would suggest for any journalism student. In front of a full auditorium, they shared those experiences through short excerpts of their stories, and then opened up the panel for questions, asking things like, how is Ethiopia different from what we see in the movies? What is the poverty level at? And what is their perception of America? The audience quizzed the panel for details about their trip. Dr. Ted Pease, journalism and communication department head, said he hopes students see the benefit in a journalistic opportunity like this. And the traveler said if given a second chance, they would gladly make this trip again. What a wonderful storytelling opportunity. And I think what we, what we found out today was that uh, they learned a lot and taking the classroom with them outside the country was a wonderful experience. Open our eyes to what we were getting ourselves into. If you want to do conflict journalism, you have to understand you're going to be around that kind of thing. The world's not a pretty place, and once you get out and see it, you're going to understand, you're going to realize if you want to do it or not. One country has made new ties with Utah State University. Congo Media Minister Lambert Mende met with USU officials Monday afternoon to sign a two-piece memorandum of higher education framework. The first piece is between USU and the Congo government and the second between USU and Lodija, a new school in the Congo. Mende hopes to make Lodija feel more established by bringing many of USU's ideas to the Congo. While it's Mende's first time at USU, he says he's enjoyed the visit. Seeing what I have seen here, I'm happy to start with Utah State University because I enjoyed being here. I saw a, a, a little town, but uh, with a human level of living, a good quality of life. 
I felt more comfortable here than in New York or in any other big city. In a few years, Mende hopes to start exchanging faculty members, researchers, and students between USU and the Congo. Coming up next, USU students met at the Block A with chapstick in hand, all in the spirit of homecoming. And election time is upon us, we'll tell you how students feel about it. Is it hard for you to get a kiss out of your date? Well, not a true Agonite it isn't. Last Friday, students gathered in long lines just to kiss on the A at the conclusion of homecoming week. True Aggie Night is attended by hundreds of students who want to be a part of a long-standing tradition. Started back in 1916 and has been a part of USU ever since. Part of this, this tradition includes getting to hear the cheers of the crowd. One can become a part of True Aggie Night by, by receiving a kiss on the A under a full moon at midnight by somebody who is already a True Aggie, or on homecoming or A Day by someone who is not. If you missed True Aggie Night, you can catch it again on October 29th. Elections are heating up this October. Lauren Brewer found out what your fellow Aggies are up to this election season. Fall brings a lot of changes to Utah State University. Leaves change colors. The fountain dries up. But this fall, students may change something else. In about a month from now, this area here will be filled with people who are waiting to vote. October is the last full month of the election year. Many students have a lot of issues that they are worried about. I've decided recently that I think the most important issues to me are things like abortion and gay marriage and stuff. And so I'll probably base who I vote for on stuff like that. Other students are excited to affect the election. I actually just registered to vote actually because of a club on USU and so hopefully I'll be able to learn more about um, the candidates and be able to make a vote this year. Not everyone believes that student efforts count this election. They live in the hotly contested 4th U.S. House District where Jim Matheson is trying to retain his seat against the challenge for Mia Love. Unless they live in that district, there really aren't very many interesting races in Utah. So I'm not sure that uh, I would implore students to be engaged in this particular election. Some are still hopeful that their vote matters. Because every person's vote really does count, um, even though there's a there's usually a majority within states, um, still it's that you got out there and you took the time to vote, it means something. Lauren Brewer, ATV News. If you would like to learn more about this year's election, log on to vote.utah.gov. Cuddly stuffed animals are on their way to the Children's Justice Center and it's all thanks to motorcyclists who took them on a ride through Cache Valley on Saturday. Katrina Warburton is with us live. Katrina, what can you tell us about the annual teddy bear ride? Hey guys, yeah, the ride was great. We had a great time. There was beautiful weather and a lot of people showed up, so it was a great turnout. Um, there was all different types of motorcycles and they all brought something along, a teddy bear. Motorcyclists from around Utah gathered Saturday morning, all with stuffed animals, to ride through Cache Valley for children who've been abused. Uh, this run is for the Children's Justice Center, which is a, uh, an organization that deals with uh, uh, traumatized children, neglected children, and abused children. And the teddy bear is something that a child will get when they go through all this stuff. They are used for comfort measures at the CJC for when the kids have to be interviewed in domestic violence situations or in abuse situations. They have to be interviewed and the little kids just find comfort in the stuffed animals. The American Bikers aim toward education, also called a bait, and Cash Christian Crusaders got together and created this yearly ride 18 years ago. We believe in uh, education and not legislation when it comes to uh, making people aware of uh, motorcyclists and motorcycle safety. We don't need some guy that sits behind a desk that weighs 500 pounds and has no idea what a motorcycle is telling us what we should or shouldn't do on our motorcycles. I just think that it's a good cause giving these animals to the kids that, you know, that are, that are suffering. The route on Saturday started at Renegade Sports and went through Sardine Canyon, through Deweyville, and back down Logan's Main Street. Now that the teddy bears have finished their rides, they'll be donated to the Children's Justice Center. Hopefully it'll make some kid feel really good. And the proceeds didn't just... <laughs> and the... 
the stuffed animals didn't just go to the kids. All the proceeds from the event also went to the Children's Justice Center. Back to you guys. Thanks, Katrina. It's so much fun seeing those big, burly motorcyclists with these little stuffed animals. Ever wanted to see what Logan looks like from above? Last Thursday, students and faculty had the opportunity to take a ride in a Black Hawk helicopter. The 64-foot chopper landed on the hyperfield where everyone was briefed on how to strap in the seats. The Army ROTC took a few trips to civilians on the helicopter before continuing with their training. The exercise was meant to give the students an idea of what the Army was like and highlight the ROTC. The program is based on making students stronger leaders by focusing on values like honor and integrity. Once they finish school, cadets have a commitment of three years as either National Guard, Reserves, or Active Duty. It's no secret, everyday students kick into low gear and pedal hard to stay on top of their schoolwork. There's a place on campus called Aggie Blue Bikes doing the, that very same thing to help make a student's commute easier. Steve Crass shows you in depth what they have to offer. Yummy. It's an organization specifically for student faculty and staff on, on USU campus. We are a student bike shop as well as um, rentals. So we do a few different types of rentals, a three month rental as well as a 24 hour rental. Our three month rentals are bikes that we get and we refurbish them and fix them up and get them running so that when we give them out to students, they're theirs for three months. They're expected to bring them in about every two weeks so we can do the maintenance and the upkeep on them. And then we also have uh, student tool boards. So if students bring a bike to uh, school, they can actually come in and work on the bike once again for free. These bikes are usually refurbished or they're donated, um, repossessed by police. So we get a huge variety of bikes. And so we have to do everything from completely strip them down and update every single part on them to just some basic maintenance as well. A huge emphasis is, um, is on education at Aggie Blue Bikes, so you know, the whole concept of Aggie Blue Bikes is more people on more bikes more often. So um, we'll try and do some bike sales to sell bikes at a reasonable cost for students. You can always call us or you know come in. It's a great, it's a great way to, if you just come in and talk to one of our staff, um, you'll kind of get a feel for what's going on in the atmosphere, which is a great way, I think, for people to know what we do and what we're about. Bike rentals are still available and students can cruise into Aggie Boob Bikes through Monday and Friday, through Monday and Friday from 8 to 5. We've got our weatherman Lauren Brewer in the studio with us. Lauren, feels like it's cooling off a bit. It is. Um, the uh, fall is officially upon us and we'll have your weather right after this. Okay, um, I'm Lauren Brewer with ATV News. We have good news from the National Weather Service. Um, uh, we go to our image. Here we can see that the most of northern Utah no longer has any ra red flag warning. Red flag warning, if you don't know what that means, means that there is no extreme fire hazard for most of northern Utah. And this is because, if we can go to the next image, there is a cold front coming in from Canada that is cooling off most of the United States. And it's also bringing with it um, some early weather, winter weather with it, uh, and cooling down most of the United States. As you can see, a lot of uh, the West is very cool, and most of the, the rest of the United States is cooling down as well. And now we go to your five-day weather forecast. Today, the high is going to be 66 with a low down in the 29s. Then Thursday, it's going to continue to cool down with a high of 64 and a low of 30. And Friday, it's still continuing with that trend of cooling down. It's going to have a high of 60. It's going to be partly cloudy as well with a low of 27. And then Saturday, it's going to be the coolest point of the week with a high of 59 and a low of 27. And then Sunday it's going to come a little bit warmer, still be partly cloudy with a high of 62 and a low of 30. So that's ATV weather. I'm Lauren Brewer and we're coming back after the break to, sport, uh, to Meredith with sports. What's up Aggies? I'm Meredith Kinney and this is ATV Sports. For homecoming week, Aggie football tried something a little different. 
It was a sold out whiteout with UNLV in town Saturday. USC wasted no time. Here's Kerwin Williams moving the ball. He would go on to have a career night. Chucky Keaton with the pass for the first touchdown of the game. And then later in the first, Keaton finds Chuck Jacobs. He tags on an extra 15 yards and seven points. Keaton goes deep to Williams and it's a 25 yard run for the Aggies. Williams would run for 125 yards on the night. Uh, the Aggies had forced turnovers, first pressure on a first down, and then a fumble to give the Aggies great field position. And the Aggie offense was back on the field. Keaton goes to Williams again with openings everywhere. Curran runs 60 yards for the touchdown. And the Aggies win 35 to 13. It's the wide out, you know, really got the fans into it, and they. They felt like they were you know, a part of the team and having them, you know, how many fans were here tonight, having all of them cheer and, you know, rooting us on, it's, it's great, really. Uh, gives us a lot of positivity and a uh, lot want to play great for them. That was crazy. Uh, no, we, we first came out, it was only a couple people at first whenever the quarterbacks and receivers came out to warm up. But uh, as soon as the herd started rushing it, uh, I'd say there was about 150 there. In all the white shirts, and uh, just seeing Matt and how rowdy they were during the warm up, was, uh, it was really exciting. And then uh, as we came out for the entire game, and we just looked up and saw a sea of white. It was a, uh, it was an amazing thing. It was one of those uh, once in a lifetime experiences. If our crowd is at ten every game, I think it was definitely two times uh, what it was at with the whiteout tonight. Uh, we were all excited to get out there in the white jerseys and everything like that, just to go out and see how many, uh, how many fans had had. Uh, had bought white shirts and were out there, and how many people were out there, uh, the attendance of the crowd, anything like that, it definitely added to the atmosphere tonight, and it made us more excited to go out there and play. Williams said later in the interview he felt that it was the best game of football he had ever played. Aggie football makes a short trip to Provo this week to challenge the Cougars. Hockey headed to Ogden after an off week for the second game of the season. Sheet ready to play. After a week of rest, Bryce Scherschel got the start in goal, looking to repeat on his 35 save performance. The Aggies dished out hit after hit, keeping Weber on the defensive. They're just destroying their offense. Offense. Midway through the first, Brian Gibbons launched a bullet to Cooper Lim, who buried the puck for the first goal of the game. Uh, Lynn found the net again going one-on-one -on -one with the Weber State goalie to put the Aggies up 2-0 to zero in the third. It got a little chippy later on in the game, putting the Aggies on, killing off a power play. But Stu Hepburn would tip in a short-handed goal to have the Aggies win 4-1. to one. Coop uh, was snake bitten the last game and had a couple opportunities that he missed. And uh, tonight he really came through. Oh, played out of his mind. The first goal was posted in on a one time, or second one was a short handed goal. Played great tonight. I felt pretty good. Good to get the first couple goals under my belt there. That team made it easy on me again. Kept the shots to the outside. Like the team did. The team did well. Made my job easy. The Aggies are in Colorado this weekend for three games. It's a make or break weekend for the Skaters. Aggie Rodeo was in action this weekend. Caesar Abbott brings you all the thrills, spills, and good old Western fun. Under a full moon, it was rodeo night this past Friday at the Cache County Fairgrounds where the USU team competed in its only home rodeo of the season. Events ranged from saddle bronco riding, steer wrestling, tie down roping, team roping, goat tying, bull riding, and barrel racing. I felt like the rodeo went really smooth and felt like it was a fun time for everybody. Um, our team worked really hard uh, bringing, bringing everything together for the rodeo. There's a lot of people there Friday night at the rodeo, had some really great support and felt like it was a fun time for everybody. Among the USU team members that did score are Trevor Merrill, who placed first in round two Saturday, but second in the average of team roping. Cody Wadsworth, who placed first in the second round of calf roping,
but fifth in the average, and Nicole Johnson, who placed third in the average for barrel racing. The USU men's team placed fifth overall and the women's sixth. With it being a home rodeo, I think there's some added pressure, definitely, for wanting to do good, you know, in front of everybody that you know. And we had a few individuals who did a really good job. The rest of our team had a little bit of bad luck, but you'll have that in rodeo. Um, but I felt like we did pretty well as a team. So. The USU rodeo team will next compete at Idaho State University in Pocatello this coming weekend. Cesar Abbott, ATV Sports. Homecoming events may have stopped you from making it to this week's rodeo, but there are other events close by, like in Ogden, if you missed it. Every day is a great day for football, and that was especially true at last week's homecoming powder puff game. The action was high as Green Team Green Machine and Team Blue Rogers battled it out Thursday night at Romney Stadium. Celebrities like Wild Bill and Preston Medlin looked on as Green Machine held the lead all night, eventually winning 35-13. to Sportsmanship was the name of the game. Both teams had great play calling and kept it interesting and respected each other all the way. Um, here's what the couple of Green Machines had to say. We had fun. Like our team was so sick. It was great to play with Paige, who put the team together. Like it was so fun. It just feels good to win, <laughs> especially a, a team that won it last year. It just feels good to take them off the yeah. field, knock them down. I love the spirit at USU, and so it's hyped up a million times more when we're at homecoming. It's crazy. I love it. Green machine kill! <laughs> well, that's it for ATV Sports. We'll be right back with more ATV news. Have you ever wished that books you read could come to life? The Human Library gives you an experience like no book has done before. I went there to see what the commotion is all about. Or, on, the um, on the air. All right. People became library books that you can check out and listen to as he or she described their story. But how did the Human Library come about? About 12 years ago in Denmark, it's the first human library and um, there was a group of people that were, they were trying to figure out how to reduce violence. I guess they were having some problems with that and they thought, well, if people knew each other more, they probably wouldn't, the, the violence would be reduced. You can check out books on experiencing chemo, working on radio, studying abroad, and more. After you decide what book on the board you want, you come here, you read the human library rules, and you sign up. You will know if the books you want are available or checked out. Then you are seated with your book and you listen. All the human books have a unique story to tell. Well, when I was younger, I was told that because I was a girl, I couldn't do science. And so I thought that this would be a great opportunity for me as a scientist to share my experience and to share what it took to overcome that stereotype. I thought it would be neat to kind of see if there are other people. Um, there are a lot of stereotypes about uh, Hispanic culture, Mexican-Americans, and um, anyway, so I thought it would be neat to kind of ha have the opportunity to share my story. The Human Library runs from 1 to 4 every day. The experience of the Human Library will make you think of books and people in a whole new way. The Human Library happens every semester and we'll be back in the spring. Felix Baumgartner, an avid skydiver, aims to break the sound bar barrier in an attempt to jump from 22 miles above the earth. Scheduled to jump this coming, this coming Monday, Felix's team says it's, it, it's not, it is not to break a record, but to provide medical and scientific data for, future, for the future among the members of his current skydive, excuse me, his team, his current skydive record holder, Joseph Kittner, who jumped more than 76,000 feet above the earth in 1959. Well, from all of us here in ATV News, excuse me, from all of us here in ATV News, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day, Aggies.